Welcome to Speed Learning English, your podcast for smarter and more professional English. Hello, Richard. Hello, Sven. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine and let's start. Let's get it started. I've got a very good friend, Tony. He lives in England and the only phrase he knows in German is Gehen Sie gerade aus und der Bahnhof ist nach der Ampel auf der rechten Seite. <laughs> uh -huh. And whenever I phone him, and I phone him twice per year, when he's got birthday and when he's when we um, talk at Christmas, he always welcomes me with this phrase. He knows exactly how to describe somebody, how to get to the station if the station is closed. But this is probably not a sign of good German. Um, the most impressive answer um, to the question of can you tell me the way to a supermarket in English was when I was in Mannheim at the station and there was a young man from Pakistan who asked one of the officials who worked for the Deutsche Bahn uh -huh. if there was a supermarket nearby because he wanted to buy something and the answer was Can you Aldi? By Aldi, you can become everything when you will. And I think <laughs> this phrase has all the false friends that German and English has in common. What do you think? That's that's true indeed. A lot of false friends. <laughs> One sentence. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with these false friends just before we go come to directions, because a lot of people say can. Um, And they mean, or let's say the English word can, I can, you can, does not mean canon. Canon mm -hmm. means to know. Can means können. So can you help me? Doesn't mean kennen Sie jemanden, der mir helfen kann, but it means können Sie mir helfen. So can you Aldi? Aldi is the most important supermarket for a lot of people here. And we know where this... Um, lady was um, getting her food from her shopping items mm -hmm. can you already buy aldi buy well how would you translate buy as in buy bought or for example the german buy because it's no, for the, the english buy the english buy i okay. mean the german buy is at for example yeah. yes yeah. And But it's also down by the river, for example. Normally, English words, you can't translate them directly into the German, um, into a German sentence. But um, you would, in German, you would say von um, or even also the, 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 the German by which is in English at, you could also use it interchangeably. It depends on the situation and what you want to say, really. Okay, so do you have some examples where by means at and by means close to or by means something else? Durch, mm -hmm. like directed by James Cameron? Yeah, that, that's, 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 um, That's a good example. For example, if you are um, summarizing a text and then you say, um, you use a title, um, um, I don't know, um, what what James Cameron, um, Cameron? Uh, Titanic, so, huh? Titanic, I wanted, uh, I was looking for the word. Titanic, Titanic um, directed by Cameron, or if you, if you are, if it would, would have been a book, um, the author and then written by. So that's then by, and then you can say also um, by the supermarket. That's then, you see, von in the first case, and then now in the second case, by the German by. Okay, Richard, can you just give me a few examples about how how would you use the phrase by, like pass by, we meet by the sea, or um, goodbye, <laughs> let's buy some bicycle. Uh, so um, the goodbye is another buy um, with an e at the end. Um, so um, as I mentioned, um, firstly, it's by an by an author. That's one way to use it. Um, um, 
this donation was uh, was made possible by um, by I don't know Bill and Melinda Gates. So then it's uh, first in the German font, and the second in the second example is Duish. And then um, yes, these generally are, 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 are good examples. The word by in this in this example is very great because it has in the German language has four definitions or four ways you could use it. So it's quite difficult to uh, to use one English word that has so many meanings in a German language. So yes, there's a difficulty and that's where this um, false friends actually arises from, from the different ways you could use that single word with just two letters. And that also makes makes it clear that it doesn't make any sense to just learn words like on a vocabulary list to, to learn them by heart you just you always have to learn the context and understand how it feels sometimes you um you say a phrase and you feel that something is wrong in this phrase and you you don't know really what it is so once you got this feeling for for grammar or for those small verbs in the language then you're on the right way By the way, right way. So, if somebody asks you for directions, I mean, we have left and right and straight ahead and straight on and pass by, pass by the museum, cross the road, cross the street, take the next roundabout. But how would you ask somebody in the street for a direction? Do you do it anyway or do you always use your smartphone to have a navigation? Uh, generally, nowadays, I use my smartphone um, and I think it's um, it helps a lot of people who are very um, um, not very but who are introverts so they don't, they don't like to speak to um, people they don't know but if you have if you are in the situation where you really need to ask somebody for the direction I would always always start the sentence with excuse me because you have to um, be polite you have to understand in that situation you want something from somebody you don't know so the, the the best way in order to get um the result that you want the the correct direction is to appear polite or be politely right so um so you ask excuse me how do i get to for example the railway station in our case we want to go to the railway station and um or If you want to go to the um, nearest post office, then you can also ask, where's the nearest post office, please? But I always understand that, excuse me at the beginning and please at the end. You want to be polite. So, excuse me, how do I get to the railway station, please? Excuse me, where's the nearest post office, please? That's how you would start and structure the sentence. Okay, so in our online course, we the online course of the Speed Learning Academy, Power Training English for Germans, we have one part where we talk about directions as well. And one exercise, we have a lot of exercises in this course to train the practical use of the language. We tell people, go out in the street and ask for directions. Provocate situations where you can ask for directions. Even if you live in Germany, You have to train and we assume that that 50% of the people that you meet in everyday life are able to speak English with you. The younger, the better. Or if it's, it's a, if it's a business person, then it's very likely that this person can respond in English. So then ask for directions by, excuse me, where can I find a supermarket, for example, and Once this person has moved around the corner, go and get the next person and ask the next question. Excuse me, how do I get to the supermarket? Even if you know where the supermarket is, just to avoid your shyness or just to train talking to people. The idea is to provocate situations in which you ask people and to to listen how they describe the way, even if you know the way, but just to to train conversation in English with other people. And whenever you are in a foreign country, I also recommend people to 
really ask people in the street instead of using their smartphones to get the navigation system. And interestingly, what happens is people, people, when I do this, people always ask me, do you have a smartphone? I can show you how you can find the way using <laughs> your smartphone. It's incredible. Yeah, Young people take out their smartphone, they, uh, even if it's 400 meters, you know, I know exactly where it is. I know the supermarket is 400 meters straight ahead and they take their smartphones because they they really don't know how to describe it yes yes but it's also um human nature we we tend to uh, take the option where we are and where we are in our comfort zone and i always say that the brain is it's not a muscle but we have to think about the brain as a muscle if you oftentimes train it um your muscle will get bigger so in, in the in the sense of uh, in the sense of the brain, if you get out of your comfort zone and approach this method that Sven just used, your brain will get attentive to it and it will um, stimulate it, and you will, you will, you will, you will, your English for giving direction will be better. That's right, and also understanding somebody who speaks English because talking to people in the street also means that they have different accents or different dialects or different ways of pronunciation that's true because you you get in different situations you can give different answers because the questions are different you can uh, give uh, different or ask different questions because the answers are different or somebody does something very unexpected say so. yes yeah and another another possibility to to support the learning process is to have the smartphone using the recording modus to record a, um, a memo, a language, um, a voicemail, for example, and then asking for directions. And then you record the answer of the other person and you just use this information to work on it in the, in, in the future, mm -hmm. to write it down and to, to have your conversational script fixed completely just by using your, your recording function of the the recording function of your smartphone to record the answer of the person yeah true okay so richard thank you very much next time i want to go to the restaurant with you yes. um here in this podcast mm -hmm. um, until then i wish you a great time thank you very much for being with us again thank you and sir. Uh, stay healthy and happy and all the best for you Thank you, Sven. Stay safe as well. And until next week. Until next week. Ja, und auch hier wieder der Aufruf an alle Zuhörer, die ihr Englisch verbessern wollen. Wenn ihr den Powerkurs Englisch noch nicht habt, dann holt ihn euch doch einfach. Ihr bekommt ihn unter speedlearning.academy-shop und da findet ihr dann einmal den Powerkurs Englisch, der euch in zehn Wochen fit macht. Oder das 21-Tage-Training, die Challenge. Dort findet ihr nochmal muttersprachliche Ausdrücke, die englische Muttersprachler benutzen. Ansonsten bleibt hier treu beim Podcast oder holt euch die Möglichkeit, euch online oder gerne auch offline mal persönlich coachen zu lassen. Wir bieten auch immer mal wieder regelmäßig drei Tagesseminare an, im Einzeltraining oder auch in Gruppen. Da könnt ihr dann Richard und mich auch persönlich kennenlernen. Wenn ihr dazu Fragen habt, einfach melden unter info at speedlearning.academy und ansonsten bis zum nächsten Mal. Schnitt, äh, wie buchstabierst du dein Bei gerade? BY. Ach so, das normale Bei. Oh, okay. Ja, Bei. Ich hatte also nämlich Bei, BY. Nicht das Kaufen. Ja. Dann nochmal bitte die Frage. So we meet by the supermarket. No, also, no. now you are Schnitt. Jetzt muss ich jetzt nochmal nachdenken. Ja, also das heißt ja, we meet by, by the sea. Ja, das ist jetzt echt ein false friend. Da muss man immer hinterher so also, durcheinander denken, weil es jetzt auch irgendwie äh, bei kann man kann ungefähr vier Bedeutungen haben. <lacht>